Welcome to the Imaginative Storm Writing Prompt of the Week session. I'm James Nave. I'm Allegra Houston. And on Saturdays and on Thursdays, we meet with groups of writers and generate material. Today is Saturday, and we're recording this after we just finished our Saturday session. So what we would like to do is give you a sense of what we did just 15 minutes ago. So we're going to start by offering you an image to work with. And as you look at this image for two minutes, and we will time you, generate a list of words. Whatever words pop into your head as you look at this image, or short phrases, but not joined up writing, a list that looks kind of like that. Or like this, <laughs> Yeah, if you can't write legibly. <laughs> so um, the words don't have to have anything to do with the image at all. They don't have to have anything to do with one another. Just whatever pops into your head as you look at this image. So now you've generated two minutes worth of words. Some people might generate as many as 60. Some people might have 10. You have whatever you have on your list. So what we do after everybody generates the list, we go around the Zoom room and ask each person to give us one word or short phrase from, from their community list and from, the from their personal list. And then we make a community list out of that. So we'd like to give you our community list now. So you can work with that when you start to do the 10 minute writing, which is coming up really soon. Like okay, right? here it is. It's kind of collective imagination, like a collective unconscious when we make the community list. Soliloquy, foundation, graffiti. My cord of communication is limp, a thing of the past. Do not disturb. Where to now, C-3PO? Poetic inspiration, of course the crown, messages from the people, portal, ancient phone, just don't hang up, finding change, Superman's changing room, telegraphic calling, whimsical, a simpler time, a beacon of bygone, word napped, outdated and proud, dial a poem, Catch old Santa, empty words, quick stop for a rhyme, solidity, hang up. So now you have our community list and you probably sensed when Allegra was reading the list, you could take any one of these images and start, for example, do not disturb. That's all you need to create 
an, a, a story. That's one prompt. I or, started with where to now. Or, Actually, I left C3PO out. I just went off of where to now and maybe used two or three other okay. words, but that was it. Or you can go with where to now, or of course the crown. What we'd like for you to do when you generate your 10 minutes. There's a logic to this that we often bring when we're trying to write. We let our rational mind work things out like foundation would be a word. And then you might think, well, I wonder what would go with foundation. Foundation, maybe portal and foundation, and there's a house. That's the rational mind. And if you let your imaginative mind do the work, you might go, the foundation outtake that dials a poem is a thing of the past in the do not disturb ancient phone world where I won't hang up, nor will you. So I'm just letting my imagination play. So we want you to write for 10 minutes and let your imagination do, do the work. Let it take the lead in this dance between your imagination and your... Your rational mind. So think of it as your imaginative intelligence. You know, there's artificial intelligence, as we all know, and physical intelligence and logical intelligence. What about your imaginative intelligence? Let it uh, be drive the bus today. And, uh, and your rational mind can just be a passenger somewhere in the back. So for the next 10 minutes... See where you go and let your imagination surprise you. And the 10 minutes begins now. And I have to say, since you talked about the bus, all aboard. Oh, that's the train. Anyway, your 10 minutes begins right now.
So we hope you enjoyed that. We hope your imagination surprised you with some, some stuff that went onto the page. And the next thing that we want to ask you to do is read it aloud. And uh, put, you'll put us on pause while you do that. And you may think, oh, well, why should I do that? I don't know. I think maybe I'm going to skip that part. But please don't skip that part. It's actually a really important tool for you know, taming your inner critic and retraining it to actually be useful to you. It's a really important tool for finding your voice. It's a really important tool for building your confidence and your momentum and your curiosity. And when curiosity takes the lead with your imagination, as you write, um, there isn't any room left for criticism or doubt because you're just curious, you're exploring. So please do put us on pause now and read what you wrote aloud. Even if it's to an empty room, it's not empty. You're in it. So there you go. You read your work aloud. When you were doing that, did you notice how your relationship with the piece you just wrote may have changed a little bit. You may have surprised yourself. You may have thought, well, that's kind of an interesting phrase that was in the middle of all that mess I have. Mess is currency. And there's a lot of stuff in the work that we do, especially when we read it out loud. It's a revision tool. And it's also fun. And when I read my work aloud on the Saturday calls, I often will come to places I, I can't read my handwriting, so I don't worry about it. I just make something up out of the clear blue sky and let it go on. And I don't mind adding whimsy and I don't mind being illogical. I just say something and then I pick up the right. I pick up where I can understand what I've written and go from there. So there's a lot to be said for reading your work aloud. And there's you, also a lot to be said for writing messy. It's another opportunity oh, yeah. for the imagination to um, to pop something new in there. So, you know, when Nave is saying just make something up, yes, your imagination will, will continue to play as you attempt to read the writing that you can't read. And actually one of the words on the list that I gave you, solidity, I added that afterwards because it was um, somebody who misheard soliloquy and I thought, oh, great. Well, let's have solidity, too. So um, don't worry if your writing is messy. You can actually consider it a plus, not a minus. And if you like what you read, if you're intrigued by what you've done, clean it up a little bit or not too much and go to imaginativestorm.com. And there you will find a link to our Imaginative Storm community, circle community. And that's where everybody on the Saturday calls go to, and the Thursday as well, they go to uh, post their work. So everybody gets to share the work a bit and, and interact and praise and enjoy and, and pick up the vibe of what's happening during the writing sessions. So this is how you get to Imaginative Storm on Circle. Go to imaginativestorm.com, scroll across the top navigation and you will see community. Click on that. And on the community page, scroll down. Pretty soon you will see the imaginative storm on circle. Click in the picture, click on the word circle, and that will take you to our circle site. If it's your first time, you'll need to make a login name and password. It's free. And then go over to the left navigation and you will see prompt of the week. Click on that and you will be in a list of all the prompts that we've done for the last three and a half years plus with the most recent one at the top. When you click on one of the prompts, you'll see the image, you will see the word list, you won't on that one because I haven't put it up yet, and what other people wrote. And then if you scroll right down to the bottom, it will give you a box where you can add in what you wrote. So now you know how to get to the circle and how to get on the circle and how to place your work there. And while you're on Imaginative Storm, you can find other resources as well, especially the resource that links you to joining us on Saturday, or on Thursday. What are the times for those? <laughs> wow, that was rather harsh, uh, harsh transition, wasn't it? Um, I feel like I've been put on the spot. You have been. But, yes, I have been. So let's okay. work with the spot. Okay, here we are on the spot. Um, the times for those are um, on Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific time or noon Eastern time. That's usually 5 p.m. London time, although not always because of the way that, you know, time changes work. And on Thursday, it's 3 p.m. Pacific time, which is 6 p.m. Eastern time. And I 
if we don't have anybody from London who wants to join us on, on, at that time of night, but we do often have people in the Far East who um, who come on, you know, before breakfast. The next day. Yes, before breakfast the next day on Thursdays. There's somebody in Australia, there's somebody in Japan. Uh, Nave will be doing this from Manila um, before too long. So please do feel free to join us. Uh, we would <laughs> love to. <laughs> now that you're so confused, you have no idea yeah, what time it is. Um, but yes, please do join us. Join our community. As you can tell, it's a worldwide community. It's a globe spanning community. Okay. And we would love to have you as part of it. The calls are free. These Zoom calls are free. We do have a donation link. So if you feel like you would like to contribute, that's great. But we're not counting. And we'd be very happy to have you join us and write with us. It's a worldwide community full of a bunch of people who are confused about time, but not about writing. So join us from wherever you are in the world. We really appreciate your participation today and hope to meet you very, very soon somewhere down the line. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.